Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and failed. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Praise the Lord. We are here for the homegoing celebration of our dear family member today. And we are, even though our hearts are sad, we still rejoice that God gave us this gem to celebrate with us, to live among us, and today we celebrate her life. We know that the Bible says that when a person comes into the world, that we are supposed to cry. But when they go out of the world, we are supposed to rejoice because they have not gone from troubles of this world. And we will follow the program as it, is, as it is printed. We will now have a scriptural reading, and I will be reading from John, the 14th chapter. And it reads as such. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Light, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father, and from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, even though our hearts are broken, because of the fact a link in our family has been broken by the death of our dear loved one. But Lord, we know that you have only done what you said you would do according to your word in John 14. You told us that I'm going to prepare a place for you, and you said that if you go, you would come again and receive us unto yourself. And Lord, we know that even Lee, even though Lee has gone from this place, and we cannot, she cannot come back to us, but one thing we do know that we can go to where she is. So Lord, we pray today that you will allow us to be able to be ready when you come back for us, so we may see her again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you bless this family. Lord, we pray that you would dry their tears today. Help them to know that we can make endure for a night, but joy shall and will come in the morning. We thank you for this life of Sister Lee. And God, we pray that you bless all that we do and bow to pray for today, God. Help us to be strengthened not only today, but in the lonely days ahead. May God bless each and every one of you. It's our prayer today in Jesus' name. And now we will ask for a selection from the family. And we want y'all to get into the service. I know that our hearts are sad today, but God has only done what he said he was going to do. And he's coming back for all of us. And we thank God for the life that Lee lived. I remember so many times she coming down to Reverend Pass's house and Miss Pass's house to visit with them. She was a joyful person, and I'm pretty sure that she would not want us to be sad today as we come for the homegoing celebration. So this is a celebration of life, so let us um, enjoy the music that will be rendered by Sister Lisa at this time. Hello, family. Hello. Um, it was a little mixed up with me playing, but I know this was one of Aunt Lee's favorite songs. So if you feel like it, I want you to swing along with us.
for me. And I'm pretty sure that Sister Geneva Lacovia Past Price has touched the lives of so many. I remember her bringing garden. I remember her sharing the fruits that she had preserved. I remember her doing all kinds of things and giving a kind word. She was a very quiet person, but she always could encourage you. So I'm pretty sure today she's saying, may the works I've done speak for me. And it says, a service of Christian adoration for our beloved Sister Geneva Lacopia Pass Price. And today we have come for just that. And at this time, we will have the comfort from the Word of God by the Reverend John Doe. Okay, I didn't see you. Okay. Okay, and at this time, we will have family tributes. We're going to ask that you come at this time and give your tribute. Good afternoon, family. A tribute for my sister, Geneva Lee Price, from Cornelia Neely Price. In the late 40s, Reverend T.B. Wilson was our new pastor. A choir was organized, and Lee signed up to be a member under the new leadership of Miss Annie Stokes Snow. She did not sing very much because of transportation, but she often referred to how the choir would march in on holy, 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 dressed in their robes and caps. She often spoke of how she went to help clean when it was cleanup day before the third Sunday in May. In her growing up, there was only two ministries. There was the Sunday school and the mission. Back then, there was no such thing as a skating rink. But Lee, while on her walk to Mount Herman School, had a ditch that she loved to get on when it was frozen and skate. That she could really do. 
There is a long dash that we could say about Lee, but she would like to end it with this way in honor of her sister. Should you go first? Should you go first and I remain to walk the road alone? I live in memories garden dear with happy days we've, un we've known. In spring I wait for roses red when faded the lilacs blue. In early fall when brown leaves fall, I'll catch a glimpse of you. Should you go first and I remain for battle to be fought, each thing you've touched along the way will be hallowed spot. I'll hear your voice, I'll see your smile, and gladly I may grope. The memory of your helping hand will buoy me on with hope. Should you go first and I remain, one thing I'll have you do. Walk slowly down that long, long path, for soon I'll follow you. I want to know each step you take, so I may take the same. For someday, down that lonely road, you'll hear me call your name. By Albert Candy Roswell. Lee, even though we didn't say it every day, it was like an unspoken word. I love you and I will miss you, Lee. What's interesting about that story to me is um, mom having a favorite ditch um, to play in. Uh, so I recall a time when I was playing in the ditch and um, she responded a little differently. She wasn't playing in the ditch. Um, matter of fact, she told me not to. And, you know, from that, a, a nickname um, that Greg gave me was created. You know, Dusty Rusty. Um, he gave me that nickname because mom had already told me not to play in the ditch. So I went out and played in the ditch and, um, and was filled with the dirt and sand. And I came back through the house and made it to the kitchen. And she proceeded to doing what mothers do. Um, she tore my behind up. And as Greg stated, there was dust everywhere. There was a cloud of dust in the kitchen. Um, you know, I have to say that I you know, kind of learned my lesson there. But it's interesting to hear that, you know, she had a favorite ditch to, that she liked to play in. Um, my mom was a very grateful, grateful person. Uh, she's very thankful, uh, you know, a lot of things. So I'm going to just talk about um, the gratitude that uh, my brothers and my family and I have for the people um, that have supported us um, along the way. You know, first I want to thank um, Renee, my wife, uh, for her unwavering, you know, support through this. Um, thanks to Sherry and Yvette um, for their support uh, with the family. Um, they've been there, they've been rocks for us. Uh, those, you know, Sherry and I talk about a jump back and forth. Um, you know, she's threatened me several times, but she really is a good person. Um, I want to thank uh, the friends and family um, that are participating live stream. Um, something my mom wouldn't know anything about, but um, you know these are the times that we're in due to COVID. Special thanks um, for our cousins that have supported us through this through text messages. Um, Karen, Joanne, Javon, uh, Stephen, we appreciate you guys. And a special thanks to um, our cousin Cassandra. I can't do it. Hank. <laughs> you know, for her um, support through the years. You know, she would always come down to the house. There are times that I would come and visit, and you know, Hank's dad at the house. I'm like, why are you here? And she's like, why are you here? You know, but um, she and my mom had a special you know, relationship. Uh, they were very, very close. You know, and Hank has been here, um, you know, along the way, uh, getting us, helping, helping us get through this. Um, and special thanks to my brothers from a different mother, uh, Gregory Cunningham, Dan Stanley, uh, Donald Pinchback. They have been very supportive, calling me every day and checking on me um, as we move through this. Um, I want to thank you to the Lord Lord family, where Greg works, and my dad, um, 
retired from um, juvenile justice where I work. I have special thanks to Greg's cousin and real close friends, um, Clarence Smith and Jimmy Mayne for keeping him uplifted. And I'd like to special thanks to Tracy Price, I'm not sure who that is, but um, this person is always calling, always following up with family members. If anything's going on with family, Tracy knows. <laughs> She's a little nosy, um, you know, in that way, you know, and um, thanks to our Shady Grove uh, Baptist Church family for allowing us to lay our mom at rest um, near my father. You know, sometimes, you know, a door is closed for us in, in another area and, and one is open that may be even better. I really appreciate uh, Shady Grove for, you know, what they're doing. And thanks to Johnson and Sons Funeral Home for these beautiful arrangements here. Uh, special thanks. Um, I know I keep saying special, but I really do appreciate, um, you know, with Lisa and And I need a time for for this family. And continue to do it. Lisa, um, oh my gosh. Without her, I'm not sure how we would have made it through this. Um, she's been there at the at the hospital. Whatever we asked her to do, she's done it. Um, she came to the film home, we were making arrangements, she was here, she's been our rock. Um, you know, what the things that we couldn't figure out, she's figured it out for us. Um, ask Colin, ask some questions, you think about this. Have you done this? You need to do this, you need to do that. Um, this wasn't added, uh, can you call and get this added? Uh, yeah, at least I'll do that, gosh, leave me alone, this is a lot. Um, and I mean, uh, she, she really has been a rock. Coming by, checking on mom, um, bringing her food, calling. They're real tight, you know, and Lisa least send pictures of, you know, I mean, on the porch with mom, cutting the fingernails, and just doing what, you know, sisters do. And I really appreciate um you know what you guys have done. You know, I, I can't even put it in words. Um, thanks to Kevin. Um, you know, he's, he's been at home with Greg. Uh, whenever Greg needed assistance and would ask for it, which he didn't do often, um, Greg, Kevin would step up and you know and help him out. Um, I can't give Greg enough thanks. I can't put it in words. <sighs> what he's done for for the family. This guy's been there all along. When Dad got ill, he was there. He watched my mom take care of Dad. He assisted him whenever he can, whenever he needs to. He put his life on hold for the family. Man, I appreciate that. I appreciate everything he did. When I couldn't take care of himself, he did. Not too many boys uh, can step up and do that for a mother, for a family. Um, but he did. And there's nothing I can say to him to express the appreciation I have for him right now. And all along. Thanks, man. Please hold it. Keep your head up. <laughs> you held us up. To the grandchildren, great grandchildren, there's a message I mom has always said. Be good. And be careful. That pretty much covers everything. Do those two things, you're all right. You put your head and you cover. 
definitely that. You know, put your hat and coat on. Um, even if it's in July, you need to have a hat on. Okay? Um, that's just the way she was. And I have gratitude for for mom. She has been our rock. And I've said this before that my dad was living, I thought the world of my dad. You know, he was everything to us. I, I believe we took mom for granted. She was always there. Cooking, cleaning, working in the garden, making sure we were clean. Little kids going to school with, a, with Vaseline on their faces and you know, and all that. I mean, it may have been Crisco, I don't know. But <laughs> we were one of some of the cleanest kids in school. She made sure of that. Um, and we took that for granted. But it was really when my dad got sick um, that I realized just how much she meant to that. She took care of him, she took care of us. She took care of the business matters and did it very efficiently and effectively. In which that we hadn't seen when my dad was taking care of all that. But she did that and took care of him and then took care of the rest of the family. And when we were going through our trials and tribulations as, as sons, she was there for us. She was strong for us, unwavering support. And that I'm gracious for. Mom was a quiet person. She didn't say a lot, but when she spoke, she had something to say and it, and it stuck. She had a lot of sayings that, you know, every so often I think of something that she said and I'm like, you know what? I didn't know what that meant years ago, but now I know what it means. And, um, we're going to miss her. We're really going to miss her presence, but we know that she's going to a good place, a better place. I'm not good at saying um, goodbye. I won't say goodbye, but Mom, I'll see you later. We love you. You know, how great it is when people can share words after a person has gone. I believe that my cousin has left a legacy for everyone to follow. She may have been quiet, but she, as the song said, may the work that she has done speak for her. And I will read the uh, obituary at the request of the family since the service has been streamed, and it reads as follows. Miss Geneva Lacopia Pass Price, the daughter of the late Fanny Russell Pass and Jacob Pass, was born on April 29, 1928. Following a period of illness, she departed this life on Monday, January 4, 2021. She was a native of Rockingham County, North Carolina, and was a resident of Pelham for the majority of her life. Attending the local public schools, she was an avid reader and a former member of the Mount Hermon Baptist Church. Mrs. Price was previously employed by the American Tobacco Company. Lee, as she was affectionately referred by family and close friends, was a devoted wife and mother who loved gardening, canning vegetables, cooking, making fruit preserves, and sharing the produce of her labors with friends and loved ones. To help and share was a pretty high expectation in the Price household, no exceptions. In addition to her parents, a beloved husband of 44 years, James Shorty Price, siblings Thomas Price, Caressa Parti, Ophelia Pass, Fanny May, Florence Pass, and Thea Pass preceded her in death. Surviving relatives whose lives have been enriched by her presence include sons James Kevin Price and Gregory Lee Price and Shirley of Pelham, Russell Eric Price, Renee of Charlotte, Sister Cornelia Pass Price of Pelham, Brother Alanza Pass of Baltimore, Maryland, Grandchildren Brittany Price, Saria Miles, James Kevin Price Jr., Kimberly, 
Russell Eric Price Jr., Savannah Loftus, and Brianna Clemens. Great grandchildren, Nyla and Jayla, nieces Karen Party Bell, Joanne Party, Lisa Price, and Tracy Price Barnes. Nephews Derek, Javon Brandon, Stephen Brandon, brother in law Robert Lee, and other relatives and friends. Geneva was always interested in asking about Johnny Ed, Russell, John Wayne, Pass, and Julius R. Johnson. And I would like to add that my husband, John Wayne Pass, is not able to be here due to health reasons. We thought it would not be good for him to come out today, so that's why he's not here. But I'm happy to represent my family today. And as we continue with the service, we will now, if there are no other tributes or resolutions or anything, we will now turn the service into the hand of the preacher. Because we always need something that's going to sustain us. Something that's going to be food that will help us not only today, but in the lonely days to come. So at this time, we will have a word from the Lord for none other than the Reverend John Doe. Reverend Doe. Let us pray. O merciful and eternal God, our Father, we bow with this family by the way of thanksgiving. We thank you for the life of Lee and for the many years that we have known her. And we thank you for the family. And we realize she cannot come back to us, but through our lives in Christ we can go to her. We ask your blessing on the entire family, that you would comfort them and strengthen them, protect them as they shall go back to their many different places of endeavor. Now as we stand before them, we pray that you would help us to impart words of comfort. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 We give honor to our Heavenly Father to Minister Pash to this family, my family, all of my cousins. It gives me great pleasure just to stand here and reminisce and think about the good times that Lee, our front, Neely, and all of us used to have together through life. Probably before many of you were born, we shared our laughs and our sorrows together. For many years, about all of our lives, we have been somewhat in the neighborhood of Lee Kobe. Uh, I often used to go by the sea at least once or twice a year because of the fact. I felt that it was our duty to keep family on the front burner. And I'm glad today to see these boys and their families just to know that they are my family. Well, I thank God for all of you that have come. In the midst of a pandemic, as we hide our faces behind the mask, God knows our heart, our mind. Yes, sir. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that He's keeping us right now. Mm -hmm. But just a few words of comfort that we want to leave with you. And I want to invite your attention. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and I want to read a few verses starting with the 19th verse, and I want you to listen very carefully. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, if in this life we only have in Christ. If 
in this life. Mm -hmm. We only have hope in Christ. And we must recognize the fact if in this life we only have hope the word say we are all of all men most miserable. Most miserable. So I want to get your attention from your sorrows and look to the future. There is something better. ahead of us. You may ask the question with my heart heavy, I lost my mother, I lost my friend, and you said something better. Yes, there is something better. And she had the privilege to enjoy a long and deathless life. Loving her family, doing what I could to help. And she enjoyed every bit of it. But she had to stop something better than this life. Nay, some years the Lord gave her to just enjoy what he had created. She enjoyed life. Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. She enjoyed life. She enjoyed talking with her friend, asking questions, mm -hmm. and listen to every word that you say. But she found something better. But Paul said, if in this life, we only find something uh, good. We are all the most miserable. We talk what Paul is saying that there is something better ahead. Now, what Paul is doing is descending the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is defending that. Because of the fact Paul recognized that somebody didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Corinthians didn't believe in it. You talking about my loved one have died and I'm going to see him again. Now, a lot of them had accepted Christ in this life, for this life. But Paul wanted them to look <coughs> beyond this life. Now, the reason why Paul taught this type of language Let's look at the next verse. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first to reveal that slept. He uses the phrase slept because of the fact one that believeth in Jesus Christ when the spirit leaves the body. In other words, he characterized it as a sleep. And when a person goes to sleep, Come on. some way and somehow that would be an awakening. Uh -huh. Now, Lee did not do anything that death claimed her. But what happened, it was Adam who sinned. And because of what Adam did, we have to 
to suffer the consequences. Because we inherit the average nature when we were born. So therefore, 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 because of our inherited nature, you may live many years and more. But those who live 969 years, then he died. God was doing something about it. Because every soul that come into the world had to die. God did not create us for him. No, he did. So that's all what God did, he did Christ into the world. Let me put it like this. To be our escort through life. Yeah. 
Call me Lord, I don't die. But in Christ, all because of Him shall be made alive. Go ahead. Yeah. That tells me that we went to sleep. Well, the other day. Mm -hmm. But one of these old days, well, she's going to wake up yes, sir. in the glory. Uh -huh. That's what happened when Jesus told me to wake up yes. in the glory. Well, so I said to her family, look here, if she didn't leave mm -hmm. with a million dollars, yes. she left you with Jesus. Yes. He's still in you. We walk with you. Yes, Jesus Christ uh -huh. will still talk with you. Yes, if you don't know him, yes. I would like to just admonish you. Yes. You just walk yes. with Jesus. Yes. If you don't know him, yes. get to know him. Because yes. he is. Amen. And let's go through life. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all ain't praying now. Yes, I'll make yes. it down quick. Because I want all y'all to get the message. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our escort. Yes. And escort is one who will protect you. Yes, yes through dangers of life. Yes. One that will protect you when the going get tough. May God bless all of your family. Amen. Have a smile on you. Amen. She didn't do anything to die. Adam did. But she did something to live. Father, she accepted Christ. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to ask you to stand, please. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God, in his wise proper that to take out of the world the soul of our deceased sister, Geneva Christ, we therefore commit her prophet to the ground, after earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection, the last day in the life of the world to come to our Lord Jesus Christ. And who second coming in glory is mad to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up that in it. Let us repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, God in heaven, I'll be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our and may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit go with each of us to our many different homes and rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. Let us redeem what the Lord say. Amen. Amen. Everything's been done. We're going to now turn it over to our ministers so that they would clear out in the order that they would like to or close the frame. Any words y'all would like to say? We want to say to this family, we really thank God for you 
and that can encourage your heart. Keep being a solid in life. Jesus Christ. We thank the uh, Jonathan and Sean for very much for a patient and their endurance. And so at this time, we just want to unite in a prayer of departure because we realize that God is still on his throne. Oh, merciful God our Father, the giver of life, the one who controls life and calls life back to himself, the one who is life. So we pray for this family mm -hmm. as they journey back to their many places of endeavor. And we pray for the future good in Christ. Yes. The Holy Father, we realize that as we shall leave this parcel of ground of our loved one, that you are not through with us yet. Mm -hmm. Because we realize that it is appointed unto every man to die and then the judgment. Yes. We stop here just for a few minutes to say thank you. Thank you. Because he's God and besides thee now is none other. Continue to guide us and keep us together. Yes. And forever hold our hand through the faith that we have in Jesus Christ through the resurrection and the life. We thank you. In his name, amen. 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 Would you like to say anything real fast before we close? Just want to um, let the family know that our love and prayers will continue to be with you. If you can be of further assistance, do not hesitate to let us know. May God continue to bless you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, that concludes our homegoing service. We again want to thank Reverend Doe, Reverend Paz, and each and every one that has come out of the church. And family, we'd also like to say again to you all, thank you for allowing us to serve you. If there's anything we can do it further at any time, please don't hesitate to call on us. This concludes our homegoing service. May everybody's hearts and souls be at rest in peace. May we go in peace and God be with you. Thank you.